What is up everyone? My name is Will from Ghost Hack and today I'm going to teach you how I make these complex arps in serum by just holding down one note. And this is the sound I'm going to teach you how to make today. Just these really dreamy arps, and I also want to show you uh, one technique on how to how you can use these arps to kind of maximize, you know, uniqueness and creativity here. The first, you know, step is to just, you know, stack the stack the layers here. It, this one is just octaves, and it sounds like this. And that sound, that's obviously octaves there, but you can also go up to harmonies. And that sounds pretty nice, but one of the things I like to do best is to offset them just a little bit. So if I go like this, you see it's a little bit off, you can get this kind of effect. You can even take it further. You get that weird kind of 8-bit chip tune effect, and if you add it uh, a whole, a whole note afterward, so it's a full increment, you just did get different combinations of layers and harmonies there. So that's a really fun trick to do. All right, let's jump right into this. This is only the serum patch making this. There is no post-processing or any kind of external sequencing. It's all in the one preset in serum. So for oscillator A, we're gonna flip on a cream, which is pretty much, it's, it's kind of a complex waveform at the end, but we just want the simpler part at the bottom. So we're gonna keep the wavetable position all the way down. We are going to turn on a bend plus minus right now, and we're just going to leave it. We can just leave it at, um, I have it at negative one. You can put it at 50 either way. We're going to be modulating that to, you know, kind of make it flow and move around a little bit more. I'll get to that later. But what we're also going to do for this is pan it hard left, as hard as we can left, because we're going to add a second one right here, and it's going to pan hard right. This is going to make a very stereo sound, and it's going to just add a lot of and a lot of life in the stereo image, if you know what I'm saying. So right now it makes no sound because we're turning the level all the way down, but we are going to be modulating it all the way up with, if my mouse will do its job, here we are, with LFO3 here. And LFO3 is just this really simple curve. It's just a normal, you know, up to down straight line, except I curved it a little bit up. And that's just, you know, to taste at that point. That's gonna what's gonna make it pluck. It's on 16th notes and on trigger. So this is what it sounds like. All right, very simple so far. Like I said, we are modulating the bend plus minus here with LFO2. LFO2 is just the standard triangle wave here that just first pops up and it's set to two bar. It's not on trigger, it's set on off. So it'll constantly be kind of moving around to give the art more life. And we're gonna put that all the way through 100. You wanna make sure that the modulation here is bipolar, which means it's going left and right. If you put drag the modulation on this and you saw that, then that would mean it's unipolar. You don't want that. So what you wanna do is you wanna hold shift, alt and click, and then it will uh, turn your modulation in bipolar, you know, going both ways. Now it just, you know, kind of moves around a little bit more. Sounds pretty cool. All right, I know it's not making any art motion right now, but we're gonna go ahead and cover oscillator B before I go over how to actually sequence the art. So we're gonna flip on B, it's gonna be cream again with the wave to position also all the way down. Now we're gonna be doing the same thing here with the bend plus minus, it said does not bend plus minus, this time it is asymmetrical plus and minus. So we're gonna turn this on and it's gonna be doing exactly the same thing, this one's plus one, again, it just, you know, doesn't matter, it's just a little bit of variation. The pan is hard right, because the other one is pan hard left. And the level's all the way down, doing the same thing, modulating with LFO3 here. So let's turn that back on. And now this is what we get. So yeah, that fills out that right side and it gives it a lot of space. So now I'm going to teach you how to actually sequence these into a pattern. What I've done with LFO1, it's only connected to two things, and that is going to be the semitones, for each of these uh, oscillators. Again, you wanna make sure these are bipolar instead of unipolar, because we wanna get both of the octaves, an octave all the way up and an octave all the way down. This is the shape I used to sequence this. It's The rate is on one half and it's on trigger, so it restarts every time you press down a note. And there's no real science behind this. This is, is just finding you know the notes at the right pitch, uh, a quick tip, the easy way to make sure that these kind of the snap to the grid is first of all, if you hold shift, you can add, uh, 
you can add these steps like a sequencer, like, like the sequencer in Massive, if you're familiar with that, it'll add the steps instead of just the line. And then if you hold Shift Alt, it'll snap to the grid here. So on spots like right in the middle where I wanted it right in the center and it, you know, it worked, snapped right to the center, that's an easy way to do it. Some of them you can't snap right on because it won't, uh, it's not in increments of 12 like octaves are. So you just have to find, find a good place in between there, like there and there and such. But yeah, so that's the way I made that actual ARP pattern. Next up, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn on the sub and turn on direct out. This is not outputting sub base. This is just going to be a layer for the rest of the ARP. Now we cannot sequence the sub. The sub is constantly like only, it's only at octaves. So what I'm doing here is I'm just adding um, LFO3 to the level and it's just a subtle harmony there. And this is going to be playing the root note the entire time. And it's just a saw wave, you can hear it. And it's, it's a really good layer. Now, of course, that is pretty overpowering from the actual art, but you know, the, this is direct out and the rest of these are, you know, gonna get boosted in volume through the effects section. All right, so next up, flip on the filter. You can just keep it at an MG low 12. You want oscillator A and B going through this because those are the only oscillators that are outputting sound. I have the cutoff here at 156 Hertz, fairly low, and the resonance is up a little bit at 33%. The drive, I turned up just a tad bit, you know, add a little bit of saturation at 11%. Uh, you want to turn the fat all the way up. I always turn the fat all the way up when I'm doing this because this makes sure that the filter itself is at the normal volume and any resonance is boosting up volume instead of all of the filter taking down volume and then the resonance bringing it up to normal. I like the resonance to actually boost the original volume, make it louder. So I always turn the fat all the way up. And we have three modulations going on here, all with LFO3. First off, we have the cutoff, which is, which I'm sure you expected that. It's just going up at 100% all the way. So it's even going past this area, because if you turn it up 100% and this knob isn't all the way down, it's gonna go up a little bit past. So we get all of the high frequencies there for more than just the very start. And the resonance is going down at negative 54. And again, it's not at 50%, so it's going down even further. I didn't want that much resonance at the very top of the frequency scale because that'll make it really piercing and really sharp. I just wanted a resonance a little bit around that mid range to give it not a vowel tone, just to give it a little more movement. The drive I'm also modulating just add a little more power at the top of this modulation here. It's going up just 21, so just a little bit there. It just helps out as far as dynamics. So this is what we got with the filter. If anything, it did add a lot more power to the rest of the art. Now let's pop into the effects. The first thing I have on is a distortion. And you might have not expected this, but I just turned on the hard clip distortion and I turned the drive all the way up. Now the mix is all the way down, so this is doing nothing right now. But I added a macro to the drive and I, I just added it to the mix all the way up. I'm pretty sure it's all the way up. Yeah, it's all the way up. And listen to what this does. It just adds those extra harmonics up top and smooths it out. It's not a lot of distortion like an electric guitar would have, but it's just a little bit of extra crispness and harmonics is, you know, the best way to put that. It's just multiplying the harmonics a bit more. So I just put the drive to around like 40%, somewhere around there. Again, it's to taste. And next we're gonna flip on the hyper dimension. I turn the mix to 25%, size all the way down, mix to 50%, the usual stuff here, nothing too, nothing too complicated. It just expands the width a little bit. That's the best way to do it. Next up, I threw on a flanger and I've used this on a lot, a lot of sounds. It doesn't really matter what sound it is. Just bump the mix down to 60%. You know, 50 to 60% is usually where I do that. It just adds that little extra motion to make it sound, make it sound more organic, I guess is the best way to put it. It's very hard to notice, but it is there. Next up, I got a phaser. The rate I have at 121. The depth I have at 50% and the frequency is at 600 hertz. I believe everything else is normal. Is the feedback normal? Yeah, the feedback is also normal and I just brought the mix down to 43%. You can see what it sounds like all the way up. Now that's a really harsh phaser effect. I only wanted it a little bit, so I mixed it in at not quite 50%. 
again, just more motion and more movement. My favorite part of Serum is the modulation, so why wouldn't you modulate everything you can? Next up, I flipped on a chorus just to make it a little thicker. The mix is at 42. I turned the rate all the way down for this one. You can see where the delay is at. This one is at five milliseconds. This one's all the way down and the depth is bumped down to 18.1. I flipped it from low pass to high pass filter right here, and I just put the mix at 1000 hertz, just 50% right there, and that's just cutting out all the weird low frequencies. This is what the chorus sounds with the mix all the way up. Now, this is a cool effect, but it's way too overpowering, so we just have to mix it in. You can mix it in however you please, I'll just have it somewhere around there. Multiband compression is next. You flip on multiband, the threshold for this one is at negative 28.6. It's fairly low, at least for what I normally do. Everything else is normal, but I brought down these bands. Everything else is normal, I just boosted the mid band to 104 and the low band to 102. The high, high band stays the same at 100%. The gain, however, is all the way up, so we're cranking this all the way through. That's why I had the threshold pretty low. A lot more power behind that, it just sounds a lot more crisp, it's very nice. Delay is the next effect. The feedback I have at 40%, and this is what I did here. This is what I like to do for ARPs and stuff like this. Make sure BPM is turned on, turn the left on 1 8th and the right on 1 4th. And you also wanna make sure it's ping pong. With the normal, it's gonna to sound too slow that way. So flip on ping pong, then I just uh, made the filter slope kind of like this. I just didn't want like the full frequency range because then it would be really overcrowding the actual ARP if you just, you know, kind of you squeeze the frequency range in together somewhere around the mid to high range, especially with ARPs, it'll just add a very nice layer and you can tell, you can tell distinctly in your ear which one is the delay and which one is the actual dry ARP sound. So that's what I like to do here. Uh, the mix is all the way down, but we're turning it up with this bouncing knob here. I just thought it sounded, I just thought it sounded bouncy with the delay. My mouse will cooperate. And I turned it up 59%. Again, just preference somewhere around there. 59% is way too high for the delay, but it's however you want it. I have the actual macro itself at 61. So it's actually somewhere in here. And this is what it sounds like. Yeah, really nice ambient delay there. Next up, we have the verb. We're gonna keep this on haul. The size I have at 38% and the decay is at 4.7 seconds. That may be normal, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Brought the low cut up to 27 and brought the high cut down to 5%. So we're getting most of the high frequencies here. I like high frequency reverb myself. Mix is all the way down, but again, I flipped it on a macro. So we're bringing it up to 52%. And again, 52% is too much in my opinion, but it's all about based around preference. I added on the macro, the macro is going up 59%. So again, it's actually more around this middle range right here. This is what it sounds like with the verb. All right, we are almost done. We're gonna flip on this EQ. And what I'm doing here first off is I'm rounding off the low end because there's some low end action going on, especially bringing with the multiband compressor, you know, the low band is bringing back that messy low end that really has no substance. So we're cutting that out with the high pass filter. The frequency is at 105 Hertz and Q factor is all the way down, which will make this, you know, really strange slope. But I added a macro to the Q factor right here and I brought it up to 50%. And what this is doing, you can see what it does when I'm playing. It controls the peakage of the uh, low pass filter, the resonance, if you would. And that's basically controlling how much low end there is. So I uh, named it accordingly. You don't have to pay attention to this side right here. It was going to be a shelf, but the gain is just at zero. I decided not to do anything with that. So it's only this low end. Once again, the result of these techniques sounds like this. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this tutorial, be sure to leave a like and hit subscribe to see all of our future tutorials. All right, that's it. I'm out and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy producing. Yes.